Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. I'm here in essentially my backyard just outside my door here in the Appalachian Mountains in the forest at about 2,700 feet. Yesterday we had a drenching thunderstorm rain after days and weeks of drought and hot weather. And what came out of that was that these salamanders started moving around. This is the eastern newt. Uh, otherwise known, this stage is called the Red Eft. In today's episode, I'm going to focus on the Red F stage, which is very active throughout my property. I found at least a dozen out on the trails yesterday. So stay tuned to learn everything you need to know about the Red F stage of the Eastern Newt, otherwise known as the Red Spotted Newt. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. So today I'm out looking for red Fs, and I will frequently find them out on trails just like this one right here. And you can see he is right here on the trail. Beautiful bright orange color. Oh yeah, they're so amazing. And it's amazing how many one can find. Yesterday when I was walking down this trail, just a couple hours after a thunderstorm, I found at least a dozen just laying out, out in the open, like this. Isn't that fantastic? These are the coolest guys. One of the first thing you notice when you pick these up is that they're different from other salamanders. Now this is the red F stage of the eastern newt, or the eastern red spotted newt. And they have those characteristic spots on their sides. And of course, this bright yellow color, or orange, or red, which varies in shades and in brightness. What makes them different from other salamanders is they're not slimy at all. In fact, these guys are pretty dry. And one of the reasons they can be like this and adapt so well to the terrestrial environment is that they have lungs. Keep in mind that the red F stage of the eastern newt is one of three life stages. They live three to five months as an aquatic larva, and then they leave the pond, lose their gills, develop lungs, breathe air with their lungs, and live in the terrestrial environment for anywhere from three to five years maybe as many as seven. So this terrestrial stage is called the red eft. But you can see that their colors vary. After the three to five year or so period living as a terrestrial salamander, they will return to the pond. But once they return to the pond, they'll undergo another metamorphosis where they'll lose that reddish color, turn, more darker green. They'll still have the spots on their slide. Their skin gets slimy and their tail will flatten, making them really fully aquatic. And they'll spend the rest of their life in the aquatic environment. They may live up to 12 to 15 years. And as adults, they'll breed in the late winter and early spring. I love these guys. I've got a number of different episodes Check out my Eastern Newt or Red Spotted Newt playlist for, for more detail on these organisms. You can see here there's a variation in color. And I'm wondering if that color difference is not, this is, might be a first or second year red eft, while as this one may be getting ready to return to the pond because it's getting a much darker color. And you can see that its belly is starting to turn yellow, which is much more similar to the adults that live in the water. So you kind of have to wonder, what are all these salamanders, these red F stage of the eastern newt, doing walking around in the woods in the middle of the day with seeming impunity? Well, this terrestrial stage is actually protected by a neurotoxin they have in their skin called tetrodotoxin. And this toxin is one of the most powerful emetics they are. So furthermore, these 
organisms display the fact that they're dangerous and they're bad tasting by this bright orange color. And that in biology is called aposematism. So these newts can just go out and walk around by day. When I look for salamanders, I'm usually flipping over rocks or logs or turning things over and looking underneath things to find them because they're almost always hiding. And because those salamanders, many of them breathe through their skin. And if you breathe through your skin, you've got to keep it moist. You've got to keep it from drying out. You need to shelter from sunlight and you need to stay in moist places. Well, these salamanders are really well adapted to the terrestrial environment and they can go anywhere they want because they're lung breathing and it's amazing when you pick one up and hold it in your hand, it just doesn't feel like a salamander at all. The salamanders I have picked up are generally pretty wet and pretty slimy. I read some studies about vertebrates that tried to eat a red eft and the mouth action and the clear distaste and vomiting that occurs immediately after trying to eat one or sample one or, or swallow it was very, very dramatic. Very, very powerful toxins. In fact, the, the neurotoxin is very similar to the one in pufferfish, which is a interesting little side bit. The red eft is strictly a carnivore. It may eat smaller salamanders, slugs, springtails, small insects, snails, virtually any invertebrate or vertebrate that's small enough to eat and swallow, they're going to eat it. They play a huge role in the ecology of the forest floor and the leaf litter just by their sheer numbers. There have been times here on my property following a thunderstorm where there's so many. We've seen hundreds on a single half mile trail through the woods and it got to the point where we had to watch each step to make sure we didn't step on them. So for some reason they all started moving at the same time and it was absolutely spectacular. Down here along this creek I've got this uh, fantastically moss covered trail and it's not surprising that I often find the newts or red f's walking here because they contrast so well against the green background. And of course this makes for a really fantastic photo opportunity as well. And again, holding one of these in your hand, boy, it's nothing like it. It's just completely different than any other salamander you've ever picked up. Just a completely different feel. Their skin is actually feels almost scaly in comparison to other salamanders. And it kind of has a rough texture to it as well. So this is essentially my backyard where I live here. I have a house on the top of a hill at 2,700 feet in the Appalachian Mountains of Southwest Virginia. And this is red eft habitat. They like this uh, deciduous woodland. They also get into some uh, mixed pine as well. And they will spend three to five, maybe longer years foraging through this environment as a red eft. These Fs will always return to the body of water in which they came from. Sometimes they'll breed in still water of small streams like this, but more often than not, they'll breed in ponds. I would venture to guess that 90% of the red Fs that I've found on my land probably came from this pond. And this is actually my cabin and some outdoor structures that I built with tulip poplar that I felled on the, on the property here, dried out and hand built this little one room off the grid log cabin, great for camping and stuff. But here in this pond, uh, you can hear some frogs croaking in the background. There's lots of tadpoles, many, many uh, adult newts. And here in the water, you can see one of the adult newts right down here. Um, they're beautiful animals. The adults also feed our carnivores and feed voraciously in the pond here. These are the adults. Remember, they have a yellow belly, dark green color, 
and the flattened tail, and they'll live the last part of their life cycle here in this pond. If you're interested in learning more about how newts breed, I've got a nice little video in my uh, newt playlist uh, all about how the adults breed and the very complex and fascinating mating behaviors that they'll go through. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode on the uh, Red F stage and the Red Spotted Newt. Remember, check out my playlist for other topics you might be interested in. And I have lots of videos on my favorite topic, the Eastern Newt. So if you want to learn more about Eastern Newts, check that out. And remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe to my channel, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. So thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door here in the woods in the Appalachian Mountains of Southwest Virginia.